Tennis Channel Live, and the big news today, if you haven't heard, the Melbourne Summer Series shut down because of a case of COVID. You see there on the big wall, our own Hall of Famer, Jim Courier, joining us now live from Melbourne. And uh, Jim, you were in the hotel where that quarantine worker tested positive for the virus. Give us the latest about what is going on right now. Hey, Steve. Hey, Chana. Hey, Prakash. Yeah, um, welcome to Melbourne. It's uh, It's been a wild and woolly couple of weeks down here already with, uh, you know, one player testing positive, as we know, and then several other people, a part of the tennis group, had tested positive. I was at the Hyatt, uh, where a lot of 500 people were based uh, for our two weeks of quarantine. And, and what's really interesting and, and somewhat troublesome is that this hotel worker um, tested positive after we had all left and over a week since the last person within our group had tested positive for COVID. That's a long transmission period, which gives me uh, great concern and great pause um, that if this person's positive test comes back once they do the genomic strain testing, if it comes back as the UK variant, which seems to have a longer tail, from what we're learning as far as infection goes, that we might have some real problems going forward. Fingers crossed, first and foremost, that this hotel worker um, rebounds quickly and is, is healthy and safe. But we've seen that the government here is takes extraordinarily seriously and they've done an amazing job of containing the virus and they, they act quickly and authoritatively and they will not take chances. So um, today is a day of, of real concern, I'm sure, for Craig Tiley and his team at Tennis Australia. I think we all thought that we were sort of past the risk zone, but this has reopened that, that zone for us. And the next 24 hours are gonna be really important uh, as all of us who stayed at the Hyatt go get tested today. Uh, that's 500 tests that will take place between players and, and staff like myself. So it's, uh, it's certainly worrisome and, and we'll hope for the best. Jim, uh, first I got to commend you. You seem to be very calm and in uh, good control. If I was you right now, sent back into the hotel room, there might be some broken walls over there behind you. But uh, you seem to be doing a great well, job. I have a question. When you, when you get into the testing, have they talked about the process of being able to return to the court? Will players who are immediately negative be able to return? Is there a waiting period? Well, it's, it's our understanding that, that if you do test negative, that, that you're out of your isolation period. We're, we're supposed to isolate now. There's no security guard outside of my door like there was at the Hyatt right now. I'm at a different hotel. Most of us have moved out. Um, so it, we're on our scout's honor to stay in our rooms and only leave for testing. But we, we hope that after our negative tests come back, assuming we all test negative, that, that each individual will then be allowed to proceed as per normal. But, but one thing to keep in mind here is Tennis Australia is not in control. It, it, this is all about the Justice Department of the, the Victorian state government here in Melbourne. They're the ones who dictate and mandate to Tennis Australia and to everyone here what, what, we're, what you can and cannot do. Uh, and listen, if I had muscles like yours, P, I, I might be a threat to hurt this hotel room, but I'm no threat. <laughs> Uh, well, Jim, I'm curious about, you know, the mindset and how players are maybe having to approach this. You've been through the 14-day quarantine. Some players had to go on total strict lockdown. Some were able to come out for a few hours in practice, thought you were in the clear, and now to have to go back into some sort of quarantine uh, and with the uncertainty. What do, you see, what do you see are sort of the challenges for players and what are the biggest considerations as you see it going through it? I think the mental approach is really going to be crucial here for the players, especially the ones who were on the flight that I was on from Los Angeles, who were expecting to get down here and have that five hour window to train on a daily basis. And that was not available to them. And, and the two other planes that also came in testing positive, that's going to be a challenge for them because they're behind the eight ball from a practice standpoint. They've already spent a lot of mental energy trying to get in the right frame of mind, I would imagine. Uh, and talking to the, some of the players that I know, um, they certainly felt like they kind of redlined uh, mentally and, and didn't have a lot left. Uh, and we're hoping to regain that before, obviously, the big challenge ahead, which is the Australian Open starting next week. So it's going to be a, a very tough, stern mental test for these players to try and keep it all together because they're just getting curveballs. Jim, there were six events going on this week, the week before the Australian Open. Three of those six are supposed to end on Sunday with their finals. And, of course, it's supposed to rain on Friday. So how could this potentially affect the start of the Australian Open? Is there any chance it gets moved back? 
It's your guess, Steve. I mean, you, you have as much information from that standpoint as I do. I, I'm hearing from Inside Tennis Australia they're planning to stay on track, which would mean they'll just try and, and double up the players as much as they can for matches and, you know, act like any tournament that had a rain delay and just try and finish on time. But but imagine the challenge that puts on the players to have to make that quick turn, uh, especially for the male players that have to then play best of five sets. Uh, that, that could be something very unusual. But everything about tennis in the, this era of COVID and life in general is unusual. And, and as our colleague Andy Roddick puts it so perfectly, you can't expect perfection. You can't aim for that. You just have to do the best with the, the cards you're dealt. And that's that's where we are. And, and I, I just have to say a, a, a huge uh, hat tip to Craig Tiley and Tennis Australia and their team, because in spite of all these challenges, they're right in front of the communication. They're on on Zoom calls with the players this morning trying to explain everything. They're not hiding in their offices. They're right out in front of it trying to be transparent. It's been really impressive leadership from their team in spite of all of this. Jim, we've seen Rafa pretty active on the sidelines for ATP Cup, but he hasn't jumped in and played yet. Have you heard anything about his back? He's supposed to play uh, tonight um, here or today. I was hearing that he was going to be okay to play. I mean, the, the good news for him on Tuesday when he decided last minute not to play for Kosh was that he was up and out of his seat and looked fine. And if I've had bad back problems in, in my you know post career, and if it's really stiff, you have a hard time standing up and sitting down because you know, sitting is bad for you in general. So I, I took some positives from that. I think it was more precaution than anything that that he didn't play the first match, and and uh, we'll hope for the best. He gets another day of rest today. Uh, he, he will not be quarantined, however, because he was not in the Hyatt, he was in Adelaide. So I would imagine he'll be free to train today uh, if he wants to. Only the players that were at the Hyatt um, you know, have to isolate today. There are two other hotels here in Melbourne and also the Adelaide Hotel. So there's a, a large group of players that also are gonna be free to train today. Well, Jim, we appreciate you taking the time uh, today to join us here on TC Live. We can't let you go without recognizing that awesome T-shirt you have on. Uh, it looks like a dinosaur is battling some sort of a, a, a robot. That's exactly what it is. Uh, this this T-shirt was a gift from my boys. My, my two little boys each have the same T-shirt, so we can, you know, be, be triplets around the house with it. So this is really more for them than, than for you guys, but uh, I hope you appreciate it. I'm going Team T-Rex with, uh, with that cool. one. We'll, we'll see what happens. But, uh, Jim, stay safe team out Earth there. All, we're, all <laughs> we're, we're big time Dinosaur at our house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Team Dinosaur, Team T-Rex. Love it. Uh, the little little hands, little, little <laughs> arms, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, Jim, and uh, hopefully we will hear some good news tomorrow.